We're going to be reading in Daniel chapter 3, starting at verse 16. I'll be reading the English Standard Version, but whatever version you have, as long as the Word of God is Holy Word, then that should be sufficient. Chapter 3, verse 16 of Daniel reads as follows. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. Turn your neighbor and say they were just throwing shade. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, what is he talking about? <laughs> if this be so, verse 17, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Did you hear that? Verse 17. He says, look, in this be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. For the time that is ours together today, I would like to preach to you from this simple subject or topic, fireproof. 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 Let us pray. Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Lord, we recognize that the preacher cannot preach without a word from you, without you filling him full of his Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit. So fill me from my head to my toe, Lord God. Anoint me for this time, Lord God, to proclaim your word, the gospel, the good news, the glorious good news of Jesus Christ. And Lord God, after preaching of the gospel, if someone uh, wants to know what must they do to be saved, that they know without a doubt unequivocally that salvation comes only through Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, the life, our risen Lord and Savior. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. 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 You may take your seat. Fireproof. Fireproof. Fireproofing is, is something you do to structures or materials to make them resistant to fire or incombustible explosions. It's a material for making use for fireproof. It's what's known as passive fire protection. That means it just works on its own. Fireproof or fireproofing can be used as a noun, an adjective, or a verb. As a noun, you would say like a door is fireproof. As a verb, you say they, fi they fireproof the building. As an adjective, you would say fireproofing material was sprayed on the chair. Take our church, for example, the building. Those, those thick doors that's kind of heavy that we need the ushers to hold open for you are, are made of a certain thickness to make them fireproof. Oftentimes, the leaders of this church, the, um, the administration of this church has reminded me when I've gotten kind of happy, glad leaving here after a breakthrough and a counseling session to make sure you close those fireproof doors so that if we have a fire, we can protect most of the building that where the fire breaks out it will shield the other side as we got ready to move the chairs as we get ready to move the chairs back in to the sanctuary folk, folks have reminded me pastor you got to remember we got some chairs who have not been sprayed with the fireproofing material we want to make sure we know we keep those chairs separate so we can make sure that they get the fireproofing material the fireproofing um, spray placed on them. You got to treat it. You got to spend a little bit of money to get that work done. We find that, 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 that any fireproof material has a fire resistance rating. That means the duration to which it can withstand a fire and to what temperatures. We, we, we find that, 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 that you have to conduct a fire test on a material to see how much it can withstand a fire. That, 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 that not all materials are made to handle fire, not everything is fireproof, but they have to be tested even before they put into service. That, that, that was never more so the case when we find the people of God in the book of Daniel. 
We find the people of God is prophesied by the Jeremiah, by Jeremiah that, that they would go into exile. This is the beginning of the exile period under the leadership, the kingship of Jehoiakim. We find that the people of God have been brought into exile. They've been taken out of the culture in which they've been familiar with and brought into a foreign culture. They find themselves having to serve the Lord God without the physical temple or building. They find themselves amongst people who do not worship and follow the Lord God. They got a king by the name of Nebuchadnezzar that as God had prophesied in Habakkuk that, that this king of the Chaldeans would come through and the temple would be destroyed. And, and as Jeremiah said that, that when you go into exile that, that I want you to seek the peace of the city. I want you to have families. I want you to plant gardens. I want you to build homes. But, 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 but know that th this is not your permanent place. That you may be in exile, you may be in a place that you did not want to be in, but, but, but I need for you to be faithful even where you find yourself right now. That, that, that's a word that ought to encourage us today, that ought to challenge us, that, that God, no matter where you find yourself, no matter where you find yourself on your job, no matter where you find yourself in life, whether you're starting out on a career, whether you're in the, the midway portion of a career, whether you're in retirement, that you need to make the good, the best of the situation and glorify God even in it. That even if you got challenges in, in raising your children or even challenges you're facing in your marriage or even challenges with your money, that you still ought to be able to glorify God. I, I, I know you heard the news that, that even that just came out this week that, that, that the number of faithful Christians have been going down, that has been dwindling, that you find less and less people who want to do what thus saith the Lord, but God calls his people, the faithful ones, the followers, the ones who call on the name of the Lord to be faithful even in exile. Exile. <laughs> you, you may have not been able to be at church for, for the past year and a half, but, but God has still called you to be faithful. You may find when you go to school, they don't worship the Lord God. They don't want you to talk about Jesus, but God has called you still to be faithful. I know when you go down to the city square that, that you, you might get a little scared to talk about Jesus and you might want to put away your Jesus peace, but God has called his people to be faithful. That was never more the case in the life of Daniel and his three friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Most of us, you don't know them by that name. You know them by, 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 by Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. That, 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 that God, even in their time, their time of exile, God called them to be faithful, even in the midst of it may cost them something. That, 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 that in this life, you'll face trials and tribulations. But, but be of good cheer, as Jesus Christ said, because I've overcome the world that God has called his people to be more than conquerors, to be overcomers, even in the midst of exile. Today we find that, that Meshach, Shadrach, Abednego, that's our characters today. We, we find them that they've gotten an audience with the king. They, they, they are serving in a pagan society. They're, they're working in a pagan society. They've been educated in a pagan society. The people do not worship the Lord God. And, and, and this king by the name of Nebuchadnezzar, somehow they got it in his mind. He got it in his own mind that he wanted to make a big statue to himself and he wanted everybody to bow down and worship it. That he wanted everybody to give glory and honor to his statue. That, that, that he said, I'm the king, I'm the one in charge, and you to do what I say. And if you want to be alive, if you want to be able to prosper, then you got to worship my statue. What do you do when you got to feed your children? You got to go to work every day, and you got to do things, or have to deal with people who don't follow the Lord God. And sometimes your ethics and your values are challenged in a way that seems like it contradicts the very God whom you say you love and you serve. What do you do when they don't want you to talk about Jesus? 
What do you do when they don't want you to lift up certain things or talk about certain things that if you want to get this promotion, keep that Jesus in the closet. You don't need to talk about how the culture is shifting. You don't need to talk about how the laws of the land don't always line up with God's rules and God's precepts for living. What do you do when your prosperity is at risk for being faithful to the Lord God? What do you do if you risk losing friends if you speak up on the behalf of the name of the Lord and you say what well, thus saith the Lord, what do you do when people call good what is evil in the eyes of the Lord and what's good in the eyes of the Lord the world calls evil? What do you do when your livelihood is challenged? Your children got to go to school. An education system that doesn't exalt God. Got to go to in a system where we got to talk about every single religion. Got to talk about every single faith. It's called a pluralistic society in which we live. What do you do when you want to be a witness? You want to be a light. You want to you want to tell folks about Jesus Christ and folks want you to shut your mouth, put it back in the closet and let everything be copacetic and peachy cream. I know you know what I'm talking about today because after you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you came to know Jesus Christ. You was happy, glad if you went in the waters. You had all that smile and that radiance on your face and you told some of your old, your unsaved friends what you did and then they stopped returning your phone calls. What do you do when your only friend is Jesus? <laughs> What do you do when you're only, the only person who will love you in the midnight hour on your worst day as well as your best day is Jesus? What do you do when you find yourself losing friends and prosperity because you call on the name of the Lord and you won't compromise your faith? What do you do when you wear your faith on your shoulders? Remember when we used to wear it on our shoulders? You used to talk about Jesus. They praise the Lord, praise Jesus, and you weren't using his name in vain. You weren't scared when you went up to the school to, to pray for the kids, to pray for your children. You weren't afraid to go in the city square and talk about the name of Jesus, hold a revival, and lead souls to Christ. What do you do when they want you to keep your Jesus, your faith, in the closet? We find that Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego even in exile, even in the midst of a pagan culture and pagan society, kept their faith. They didn't give up on the Lord, even though it was consequences that came with being faithful to the Lord. They, they kept their wagon hitched to the Lord, and they're a case study for how we as the people of God, as we, as we Kadesh Bardia, as we holy wander through this wilderness of life in a world that seems to want to push Jesus out of the public square that they are case study that I believe can encourage us today. Because we find Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego by the time we arrive at verse 16 in chapter 3 of Daniel that, that we see these Lord servants they in, embody the courageous audacity of faith. Did you see it in the passage today? That, 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 that the people heard that they were praying to God. The people heard that they would not bow down to the statue. They, they, the people started wondering about these people, Meshach, Shadrach, or Jen, Benico. They said, these are some Jews who don't worship our kind of gods. And, and, and King Nebuchadnezzar, when they told him about the fact they would not bow down, they called him into the king's court. The king wanted them to give an answer for what they were doing. And when the king told them, look, 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 all you got to do is bow down to my statue and everything is going to be okay. But if you don't, I'm going to put you into the fiery furnace. And they show up in the king's court and they say, look, oh Nebuchadnezzar, we got no need to answer you in this matter. You got to understand, in the times in which they lived, they didn't call him King Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> they, they, they didn't call him boss in charge. They called him by his first name and said, we ain't even got to answer you in this matter, that it is ridiculous that you've even called us before you, that, that if you think we're going to bow down to your golden statue, then you must be out of your mind. That's how it will be translated in our vernacular, that we don't even need to answer you. You know how it is, ladies, when somebody get on your nerve and you just say, look, you just say, you just look at my hand and you know, you, you, you know, you, you, you catch my back hand. You know, he said, look, we don't even need to answer you to show us the courageous audacity of faith, that you ought to have some audacity 
when it comes to your faith, that when you show up at work, they ought to be like, I can't believe they talking about Jesus. I can't believe she's sitting there in the lunchroom praying on the name of Jesus. I can't believe they walking down the street playing on Jesus. Did they know we up in New England, the frozen chosen? How dare you talk about Jesus? It ought to be some audacity when it comes to your faith. You ought to be bold when it comes to your faith. Everybody ought to know, for Christ I live, for Christ I die. Everybody ought to know that you are a Christian. Every time you go to the grocery store, you get ready, get in the line, and you open up your purse or your wallet, or you put your debit card in, and it don't come back saying funds denied. You ought to say, thank you, Jesus. And folks ought to look up and what I can't believe your audacity to talk about Jesus. <laughs> they showed up and said, Nebuchadnezzar, you must be out of your mind. The audacity of courageous faith, that if you're going to be courageous for Jesus, that, that if you're going to say that you're standing for Jesus, if you're going to really say you identify with the people of God, it ought to be some audacity when it comes to you. That means there's some folks that when you show up, you might got to stink the room up area now and then, that, that when, you, when you come to the meeting or, or when you come to the city meeting, you ought to say, let's pray before we start this thing. And folks ought to look kind of funny at you. I remember one of my mentors, he used to joke on it. He used to say he couldn't go to ecumenical kind of settings because he said he want to pray on Jesus and they don't want him to pray on Jesus. They want him to pray on some kind of God that everybody could understand in their own kind of way. And he said, so I'll send my little junior minister because if I show up at that thing, I'm going to talk about the name of Jesus. That if you ask me to pray, I got to pray in the name of Jesus because only Jesus' name got some power. Only Jesus can save. It ought to be some bold audacity when it comes to your faith. I ought not be when the children cutting up and you got to discipline them in love that, that you worried about pushing them away because you don't want to talk about Jesus, that you think not talking about Jesus is going to keep some peace in the home, but Jesus Christ said, I didn't come to bring peace on earth. I came to be a bring to bring a sword, that there'll be division, mother against daughter, father against son, that, that when it come to Jesus, it may be some division, that that ought to be the line that separate the tares and the wheat, that it ought to be some bold audacity when it comes to you showing or expressing your faith. Meshach, Shadrach, a bit ago, shows up in the king's quarters. They summoned him, and they said, we only got one word for you. We ain't got nothing to say to you. You must be out of your mind if you think we're going to bow down to your golden statue. You must be out of your mind if you think I'm going to compromise my values for that promotion. You, you must be out of your mind if you think you're going to objectify me, if you think I got to do that to move up the corporate ladder. You must be out of your mind if I got to be quiet in order for me to get a seat at the table. He says it ought to be some audacity. It ought to be, I cannot believe the audacity of them Christians. Can't believe they wouldn't shut the church down in COVID-19. I can't believe that they will sit up there and still worship the Lord God. I can't believe they projected and, and broadcasting the services all around the world that they were even over this COVID-19. Churches have gotten more bolder to share their faith. We broadcast it all over the world that, that you do some listening parties and your friends are saying, I can't believe you interrupted my Facebook time to talk about Jesus. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego shows us that the Lord's service, because they identified themselves as the Lord's service, that if you serve the Lord God, there ought to be some courageous audacity when it comes to your faith. Everybody call you friend. Then maybe you need to be a little more bold and courageous in talking about Jesus, that everybody like you and and everybody want to hang out with you and they don't go to church and they don't know Jesus, then maybe you need to have a little bit more audacity in expressing your faith. But can I push it a little further? Because the Lord's service, not only have courageous audacity when it comes to their faith, but they are confident in the expression of their faith. They're confident. It's right here. So I got one shout. I got one shout. I get one shout. That's all I need. Because praise the Lord. Because we find here, when we look in the book of Daniel, when we look in chapter 3, when we arrive at verse 17, it, it says, well, guess what? If this be so, the God we serve 
the God we serve, not the God of the world, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand. Did you see that? <laughs> they didn't say God might deliver us. Um, um, they didn't say that God might, might consider to deliver us. He said the God we serve will deliver us out of your fiery furnace. That hey, hey, We're ready to go to the fiery furnace. We're ready to go to, uh, to lose our life for the Lord because our God will deliver us out of your hand. Did you know when you're faithful to the Lord, the Lord will open doors for you? You know when you're faithful to the Lord, the Lord will deliver you from your enemies. <laughs> The Lord will make your enemies your footstools, that, that if you just wait on the Lord to renew your strength, that, that God will start to do some things and work some situations out on your behalf, that if you're confident in the Lord and, and, and know that every yes in the Lord is amen, that God will turn that thing around, that, that, that when you're confident in expressing your faith, that God will put you before kings to say and queens to say what thus saith the Lord, that folks, will, God will silence your enemies when you're confident in expressing your faith. We oftentimes wondering why the churches ain't packed like they used to. We're wondering why folks don't come to church like they used to. I got a sneaky suspicion. It's because we're not confident in expressing our faith. But you ought to be able to talk about Jesus Christ. You ought to know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You ought to be able to say that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came and he was born, that he was a man, that he existed in history, that he performed supernatural miracles and wonders. You ought to be confident to talk about Jesus Christ could heal the blind, that he could heal lepers, that, 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 that Jesus Christ set the captives free, captives to their sin, that, that Jesus Christ showed compassion to women on the margins of society. You ought to be confident to talk about Jesus and not, and, and not think that if the world say God is chauvinistic, that you can say that God loves women, that God loves widows, that God cares for the people on the margins of society, that God cares for um, um, orphans, that God can be a father to the fatherless, that, that God that I love you in the midnight hour. You ought to have some confidence when you express your faith. You ought to be able to say that it was on one Friday, Jesus Christ, when they marched him up the mountain, he died on that cross. And when he died on that cross, they put him in a borrowed tomb. But on the third day, he got up with all power and authority in his hand. And he has been raised from the dead. He sits at the right hand of God, the Father. He's making intercessions for you and I. And one day he's coming back looking for a church. You ought to have some confidence when you express your faith. That's why I break my heart. That we can't even break 10% come in the Bible study, but we want to say we want to ride or die for Jesus. Yeah, the pastor did go there. That, that we want to talk about I love the Lord, but, 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 but they say that the church is the most biblically illiterate folks when it comes to faith. That folks go to college and know nothing about Jesus Christ, and they know more about the Bible and the faith, and they can talk more about us than we can talk about ourselves. That you ought to be able to confidently, confidently express your faith. Or to have some confidence that you can stand on Jesus Christ. This solid rock I stand, everything else is seeking saying that, that when people say, did he raise, did, what, what was he, did, did he die? Yes, he died. Was he raised from the dead? Yes, he did. That's ludicrous. That don't make no sense. You can't die and come back from the dead. But, but you really believe that. Yes, I believe that. You ought to have some confidence in expressing your faith. The Apostle Paul says it this way in Romans chapter 1, verse 16. He says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God is to bring salvation. That, 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 that. He's not ashamed to talk about Jesus Christ. He knows about Jesus Christ. He knows that he's been raised from the dead. He knows this talking about the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ saves people. That, that's the power of of the gospel. You don't need to walk away from Jesus. This is a sad, sad state of affairs that some churches you go to, they never talk about uh, Jesus. That there's some churches, they want to give you a poem and an essay to engage your mind, but don't never want to talk about the supernatural and talk about how God can save a sinner, that God can save a wretch like me, that I came to him just the way that I am. That it's a sad state of affairs that folks want to walk away from Jesus and not know our hope is built on nothing less than the blood of Jesus Christ. He says, look, oh Nebuchadnezzar, our God is able 
He'll deliver us from this thing. <laughs> this ain't the first time civilization has had to deal with a pandemic. Our God can deliver us from this. <laughs> this ain't the first time you had to sit there and, 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 and crack open the piggy bank to see if you got enough food to go feed the family because God is able to deliver you from this. This ain't the first time you had some challenges with your kids. This ain't the first time that children find themselves being rebellious every now and then, that, 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 that God is able to deliver that. It ain't the first time you found yourself facing challenges and, and facing enemies and facing sit back. This, but this ain't the first time that you've been sick. Our God is able to deliver. They say, look, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar, <laughs> uh, you ain't afraid of you. Courageously, with courage, with audacity, gone, put their faith on their shoulder. Confidently express their faith. But there's one other little thing that we find right here in the passage. If I can push it a little bit further. We find by the time we get to verse 18, they got constant firmness of faith. Whew. Pastor, you done got a little deep on us. What, what you talking about? Verse 18 says, but if not, even if God don't deliver us, <laughs> I know we just said he's able, he will deliver us from your hand. <laughs> we may go down and perish on this side of heaven, but God will deliver us from your hand. But, but if he does not by chance deliver us from this fire, that, 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 that. Let it be known to you. Now look what they say, O oh, king. We want to get your attention now, O oh, king, that, 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 that even if God don't deliver us, we still will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you set up. Even if God, even if I lose the home, I'm still not going to turn my back on Jesus. Even if he walk out on me, and break my heart and hurt me. I'm still not going to give up on Jesus. Even if I lose my child to gun violence, I'm still not going to give up on him. <laughs> that, that, that even if my loved one dies, that I've been praying for him to deliver them from it, I'm still not going to turn my back on Jesus. Even if I don't get the job or promotion, I've been praying for it, Lord. I've been asking you for it. You know my heart's desire. I'm still not turning my back on your Lord. Even if they try to shut the church building down, I'm still not turning my back on the Lord. Even if a pandemic come and I can't come in the church building and worship the Lord the way that I'm accustomed to worship the Lord, I'm still not going to turn my back on you. I, we're still not going to worship you, Lord. Worship your gods. We need to get back to some old-time religion. We got too many little gods that we worshiping and them put in front of the Lord. We got too many Sunday morning activities that keep us from worshiping the Lord. We got too many indulgences and too many addictions that keep us from being able to give back to the Lord what the Lord God has given to us. We got too many fleshly desires that's become gods that we, we can't sit there and live a holy life and give glory to God in our sexual ethics because we've made too many little G's that we've bowed down and worshiped the gods of this world. That, 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 that we're not able to speak power to truth in the, in the civic government affairs because we just want to keep it all peachy cream. We don't want nobody to, to take nothing from us. We've made some little G's gods over our lives. That, that, that we're letting the children run the house instead of the parents train them up in the way of the Lord. That we're too afraid. We're prisoners in our own homes because we want to speak power to the truth. We've let these issues of our life become, these little gods become gods in our life. They say, look, Nebuchadnezzar, even if God don't deliver us, we won't bow down. Even if it get worse before we get better, we still not going to bow down. Even if we go down in the fiery furnace, we still won't bow down. That, that even if this thing don't turn out the way that we hope for it to turn out, 
we still not going to bow down. That, that even if little Johnny is convicted and got to go to prison, uh, I'm still not going to lose my faith. I won't bow down. I'm not turning my back on the church. I'm not turning my back on the Lord because the Lord has been too good to me. The God is, has kept me and protected me in the good times as well as the bad times. God has been too good to turn my back on the Lord. But I got a witness in here that can testify God has been too good to give up on him right now. We come too far by faith, leaning on his word, to turn our back on the Lord. The Lord God has been a way maker when we couldn't figure out any way out of the situation. The Lord God is still a burden bearer. The Lord God is still can build a bridge over troubled waters. The Lord God can still provide water in the wilderness. The Lord God can still be my bright and morning star. I can still weep, but joy will still come in the morning because the Lord God is still in the miracle working business. The Lord God can still deliver his people. The Lord God can still save if the Lord God wants to save. That's why I really love this particular passage because by the time we get to the end of chapter 3, it's not really Meshach and Shadrach and Abednego that's testifying. It is big old bad Nebuchadnezzar because Nebuchadnezzar has put him in the fiery furnace. But Nebuchadnezzar, when he looks and thinks they're supposed to be dead, he sees them walking around in the furnace unbound. He sees them not bound up in the furnace. He put them in the furnace bound. But when he looked in the furnace, they was unbound. Because my Bible says, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Because it's Nebuchadnezzar who sees another man that's in the furnace. It's another man, he says, the son of man, some translation. Another man, some translation says, the son of God. It's the NIV who says, a son of God. Because he sees a supernatural incarnation, the pre-existed Jesus Christ. He doesn't know it's Jesus Christ yet, but he sees an angel, he believes. He sees someone that God has sent that has unshackled his three men. He's unshackled them, and they're marching around. Do you see it, church? They were thrown in the furnace, shackled up. They were burning down. They were heavy laden. They was about to die, but old Nebuchadnezzar, he looked and thought they were supposed to be dead, but he saw the Son of Man. They were marching around, happy glad, because it's the Son of Man that comes to you in the midnight hour. It's the Son of Man that will hear your cry. It's the son of man that'll love you with an unchanging man. It's the son of man when you're in the furnace, when you don't know how to pay the rent. It's the son of God that give you a little bit of food to eat. It was the son of God that brought you through COVID-19. It's the son of God that kept this church moving. It's the son of God that helped you raise those children. It's the son of God that got you out of that relationship. It's the son of God when you're about to lose your mind. It was Jesus Christ who came to you. It was Jesus Christ who loved you. It's right there in the passage. He was testifying, Nebuchadnezzar. He was testifying that he was the real God because the world needs to see the real Jesus. The world needs to see a real God. The world needs to see the church being a blessing to the community. They need to see Christians calling on the name of the Lord. They need to see you testify in the public square. Your child needs to know it was Jesus Christ who brought us through. It was Jesus Christ who brought you out of high school. It was Jesus Christ that delivered me from the bottle. It was Jesus Christ that delivered me from drug addiction. It was Jesus Christ that brought me out of that abusive relationship. It was Jesus Christ who graduated me from college. It was Jesus Christ who made a way out of no way. When I was about to lose my mind, he kept me in perfect peace because my mind was stayed on Jesus. Let your mind stay on Jesus. Come what may, devil. I may have to go to the fire furnace, but the Son of Man will come right in there. He'll be right there with me. So Jesus Christ said, go make disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's what we need, some Holy Spirit. Because Jesus said, I'll be with you low until the end of time. The church knows a thing or two 
about fireproof. The church knows a little bit about fireproofing because it was John the Baptist who said, I baptize you with water, but it's someone mighty and greater than me. He'll baptize you with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Do I got a Holy Spirit, church? I got some folks been baptized in the fire because it's the fire that purifies. It's the fire that cleans. It is the fire that reveals God to you. Now, we know a few things about fire. That's why Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 4, don't worry about the fiery trials. Don't worry about what you're going through. It's just testing your faith. Consider it pure joy when you face diverse trials, knowing it's perfecting your faith. God calls the church in this time in which we live to show some bold, audacious, reckless faith, lavish love on the community. The prodigal father, prodigal son, it was, that means lavish. He calls us to be confident confident in expressing your faith. You ought to, you, you say you know Jesus, you ought to be able to tell some people a thing or two about Jesus. You ought to have some, some Bible in you. You ought to be a regurgitating Bible everywhere you go. And God calls you to be firm, to be constant in your faith. I remember one time may have told you the story before. <laughs> you know how it is. You, 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 you're trying to raise God-fearing children. I'm not going to say which one it was. I'll let you figure that out, maybe. Sat up there and got themselves in a little bit of situation. Got to be back in the house. Wanted to negotiate the terms for living in the house. Many years later, Sat down and said the terms the same as they used to be. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. You're you going to follow our rules in this house. I can't believe y'all ain't changed after all these years. Y'all been constant, firm in your faith. That's what the world needs to see, constant, firm faith. Stand on Jesus no matter what comes. He's Emmanuel. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Stand on the word of Jesus if you ain't got nothing else. And God will save. Nebuchadnezzar said, wow, I ain't never seen a God like this to save in this kind of way. Will save you in the furnace. Will keep you in the furnace. Will sustain you in the famished times of your life. And when you come out, won't even have smoke on you. Fireproof. Fireproof. Let the church say amen.